Hello, my name is Clint Stevens. I uh, work with SEDC. I'm the integration technology integration specialist here, uh, and just want to share with you some some amazing resources that we uh, we have available for the schools and districts in our region, as well as anyone else who who would like to use them. Um, it is digital citizenship lessons uh, borrowed from uh, Common Sense Education, their, their scope and sequence, and the lessons that they've provided for free. Uh, as well as some adaptation. Uh, first off, let's show you how to access these, these resources. You can find that on the SEDC website at uh, sedck12.org slash digsit. The D and the C doesn't need to be capitalized, but uh, easier to read that way. Uh, and again, these, this whole, uh, all these resources and this project is brought to you in part by uh, some, some great efforts and cooperative work between Iron County School District Washington County School District and our office, Southwest Educational Development Center. First little background on the project. Uh, we've been working for many years trying to get some, uh, some good resources available for teachers uh, to kind of replace the net safe curriculum that we've been providing for several years. Uh, it's outdated. It relies a little bit too much on stranger danger and, and other things like that. And so what we've done is we have, we have reached out uh, and found some amazing resources adapted from Common Sense Education uh, and turned into Google Slides by uh, Ceres Unified School District in Central California. Uh, they, have, they have also integrated uh, some Pear Deck interactivity and through our recent collaborative uh, cooperative purchase for the SEDC region, uh, most of our teachers in the region now have uh, the full version of Pear Deck available to use, which makes these lessons uh, even more um, impactful and and, uh, and cooperative with your students. It's a great way to uh, get a conversation started with your kids about these important issues. Uh, so we just, again, want to say thank you to, to Common Sense Education and Ceres Unified School District for making these things possible. Uh, to start off with, we need to access these resources uh, from the SEDC website, sedck12.org slash digsit. There you will find uh, the slides that I'm going through here that have links to all of the all the different lessons, uh, as well as the scope and sequence document, which isn't quite as pretty, but it's a, a stripped down but well-organized uh, way to access all of these, these files and these, uh, these lessons. All of these lessons are accessible or are, are live in Google Slides, and they all also use the Pear Deck uh, add-on. And so this video will show you how to access the slides and how to get that Pear Deck interactivity, those, those add-ons and everything set up and ready to go for the first time. So to start, uh, let's say I wanted to uh, present this, this lesson here from, from grades six through eight on, the, on a trillion dollar footprint. What does your digital footprint say about you? Uh, very first thing I need to do as a teacher is to make a copy of this slideshow. And why do we need to do that? Uh, Pear Deck includes the ability to, uh, to integrate directly with your students through their uh, school G Suite, their Gmail uh, login, as well as it creates uh, what we call, or what they call some takeaways, so that students get a copy of uh, each slide and their responses to the, to the questions that were there, and as well as uh, the teacher gets a copy of all the student responses so that they can uh, they can see how students answered and, and where they struggled and, and, and where, they, uh, where they excelled. So first thing I'm going to do, file, make a copy. It's going to ask me to make a copy of it. You can organize it at this point. I'll just put it in my drive. There we go. Select that, and I will just call it copy of the trillion dollar footprint. Sounds good. Make that copy. All right, that copy has been created and is now in my drive, and now I can actually go to present it. Uh, the very first time that you do uh, present using this with Pear Deck, you've got to make sure you have Pear Deck completely installed as well as uh, an account created with Pear Deck is, and another uh, Chrome extension called the Pear Deck Power Up. All right, let's show you how to get started with Pear Deck. Uh, from this slide, the video that you're watching will, uh, will live right here as soon as I get it done. Uh, we have links here to get the uh, Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on. I'll show you how to add it through uh, the slideshow itself. Uh, teachers need to create a Pear Deck account 
as well as we probably want to show you how to get the uh, power up Chrome extension for Pear Deck installed. And that will allow uh, any videos or animations or things like that to play full, full screen, full uh, resolution on your devices, on your screen, as well as student devices. Uh, so let's start off. Let me go back to my uh, copy here and let's do the Pear Deck add-on. So you'll see here uh, add-ons in Google Slides. You may have Pear Deck already there installed uh, by your district, but we still need to accept permission. So if it's not, if you don't see Pear Deck listed there, let's go to get add-ons and Pear Deck may actually be one that shows right up for you. Worst case, let's just search for Pear Deck, hit enter. And if you don't have it installed, um, it'll say add right there. Uh, but I've already got it installed, so I'll click manage. Uh, but if you don't, just click add, add or install right there. And now that Pear Deck is, if you, now that you have the add-on, we need to open it, Pear Deck, and open Pear Deck add-on. And that will open up a big sidebar over here with all of the Pear Deck presentation tools. Uh, in this video, I don't have time to show you all of the different uh, bells and whistles with Pear Deck, uh, what they have, uh, but they are a um, pretty incredible tool for, for teachers, uh, for, for interactivity. And so once we've got the lesson uh, added or in there, we go to present lesson. And this first time in, it's going to ask me, it's got, oh, we've got to create an account. So that's step two that we've got to take care of. Uh, complete my free account. And I'll quickly go through these things. Uh, I'm a teacher. Uh, we're going to use uh, authorize with my Google and we're going to use our school uh, Gmail account. I'm presenting as our Pear Deck account, so I'm going to add it to that one there. You will choose your own. I'm going to accept these or allow these permissions uh, to fly. And it should tell me that my school is premium. Again, our districts have purchased uh, that. If not, you will be able to use uh, the free version uh, for Pear Deck. You can still do most of the interactivity. You may just miss a few features. And then I'll hit Start Presentation. Okay. And so for your teachers, now, once you have the presentation started, you can choose to uh, share uh, these slide decks within Google Classroom or Canvas or another LMS that you're using. Uh, or you can just point students to joinpd.com uh, or app.pairdeck.com slash join. That's probably a little bit longer to do. And then just have students type in that code. All right, once you have started presenting with Pear Deck, you will get this screen for students to go to joinpd.com and enter this code. I will in another browser window so I can kind of show you what it looks like on the student side. Uh, I have gone, I have entered in joinpd.com, uh, S-L-A-L-W, I need to remember that. And when I first go there, it's going to ask me who I am. Uh, and so I'm going to choose my, uh, my school Gmail account. Your students should have that login as well. And then I need to enter that code one more time, S. And I'll just enter in SWALW, which should be our code. There we go. Initializing Pear Deck, loading the slideshow. It'll ask me how I'm feeling today. Uh, and it'll ask students this on everyone. I'll say, yep, I'm feeling great. And it'll load the presentation and wait for uh, other students or for the teacher to start the presentation. And I can see here that I've got one student connected on the teacher side. And so if I'm ready to start that presentation, I will start the class. You can also give the students a link uh, or see the teacher dashboard. And we'll start that here in a moment. So I'm going to start class. And now every, all the students are tied to this same slide, which is kind of nice. Sometimes when you give them a website to go to or a presentation, they're just off and, and running in all kinds of different directions. So as I change slides, you can see that the student slide is there. And so this one actually has some of this Pear Deck interactivity. So there's a question on here. Students will be able to describe the importance of a digital footprint. Today we will Okay, I can also add another response there. Uh, and then on the teacher side, if I do want to uh, show the responses here, I can do that. And those are my students Responses. I can share that out with the kids uh, via via the uh, the screen, uh, or I can uh, hide those responses and keep presenting. And so again, 
We've got some yes or no questions here. Have you ever sent a message online? And so over here I will say, yes, I have. And I have, I can show those responses. Yes is a no, so that'll be kind of a chart. Anyway, keep, I'll continue on through the lesson. And then when I reach the, the end of the lesson, I'll just jump forward to the end here. Um, and we'll wrap it up here. What kinds of information for 10 years? Uh, this response here, students can draw anywhere on the slide. So I'll just draw a smiley face in purple. All right. Kind of fun. Those are my responses. There we go. And so now that I'm done, I'm going to end that session. Uh, enter the name so I can find these student responses later if I want to. Uh, so a digital footprint. I can choose to publish those student takeaways. Again, those are uh, students will get a, a copy of the slides and their responses, and I'll get as a teacher uh, a copy of all the student responses as well. Uh, I'll publish those this time, and I will save and end the session. Okay, first time in, grant that permission. I need to do this a few more times and allow. Okay. Then there I can share this link with my students, push that to Classroom, publish that to Canvas, or whatever. I'll just return to Google Slides. And so I have now taken one of these digital citizenship lessons, and I have uh, presented it with my students. I did skip one step. I do need to go and add uh, the Pear Deck Power Up Chrome extension. Uh, I'll have the link for that uh, here in the slides. And the way you do that, you just click on that link, or you can just go to the Chrome Web Store and search for the Power Deck Power Up. And there it is. I'll add that to Chrome. I'll add the extension. This is a Chrome extension. And so a lot, as long as you're presenting these things in Chrome, I've got the Pear Deck Power Up right there. And when I present with Pear Deck, Things what animates will play at full resolution how they could. All right, and so that's just a little nice add-on that you should add uh, just in case for you and have your students add that one as well. All right, so what kind of lessons do we have available? Uh, I just jumped into one on uh, digital footprints in third to six in the third to sixth grade bands, uh, but we, again we do have our scope and sequence document there that links to uh, all the lessons here. You can everything is is organized uh, in kind of a spiraling curriculum each unit. If I'd want to jump to grades K2, I can see there that each unit has uh, five lessons plus an assessment. And these concepts kind of circle back around uh, so that you can uh, teach those in order. Um, it kind of works out that each one of these lower grade bands, uh, there are three units and three grade bands available. Maybe you just only present those six, those five lessons uh, in kindergarten these in uh, first grade, second grade, or if you want to do each one each year, students will see the same information a few years in a row, uh, or ever, however you want to do it. Uh, you guys can choose to, to uh, present these lessons in whatever order makes sense for you. In grades three through five, uh, this is our scope and sequence document. It's a little bit nicer looking here in, in, the, in the slideshow. So we have links to quickly those grades K through two, lessons, grades three through five, six through eight, and then in grades nine through 12, four grades, there are four units there. And again, each unit does have a self-assessment there available through uh, common sense education that you can have students take uh, to see how they're, how they're progressing through. So those are, that's the straight scope and sequence that we have. I've, we've also organized them by, uh, by their lesson themes. So there are eight different recurring themes. So if you just want to find a quick lesson on internet safety, you can jump down to these slides and look for the grade bands K2, 3, 5, 6 through 8, or 9, 12. Uh, we also have lessons on privacy and security. Uh, there are summaries for each one of these areas to let you know what, uh, what the overarching theme for these lessons are, uh, as well as relationships communication. Many, many lessons on those. Cyberbullying and digital drama, digital footprint and reputation, self-image and identity, information literacy, 
creative credit and copyright. And just so you know, some of these lessons do uh, refer to or highlight multiple themes. And so these lessons are repeated uh, in this area. So, um, and that's probably okay. It's probably uh, just fine if students see one of these lessons more than once. Um, and that's about it. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, appreciate uh, you taking the time to look through these and to, uh, to cover these important, important lessons with your students. Uh, again, we'll, we will post more resources and information on, on our website at scdck12.org slash digital citizenship. Uh, if you have quest general questions, you can email us at info at scdck12.org. Uh, or if, you're, if you like us and want to tweet at us and say, thanks for these resources, please send a tweet at scdck12.org and let us know what you think. Thanks so much.